Good morning everyone! Welcome to Imagination Online Experience. In lesson number nine, we are going to discuss a British artist called Bridget Riley. When Bridget Riley first exhibited her black and white abstract paintings in the 1960s, people were amazed on how they seem to move when they look at them. It was like magic. This style of painting is called op art. Op artists put shapes and colors and patterns together in a clever way to create optical illusions. So this makes the image like as if it's moving. If you had a chance to see Bridget Riley's work in her latest exhibition at the Hayward Gallery, you may experience that feeling. When you look at them, they just not still. It's in reality only an illusion. Bridget Riley was born in London in 1931. Next year she will celebrate her 90th birthday. Born in Norwood, part of London, um, but when she was a child and the Second World War started she moved with her family to Cornwall. She was inspired by long walks on the beach, looking at the water and how the light made it change its color during the day. Have you ever experienced that? That the sea seems to have a different color when you look at it in the morning, in the afternoon or in the evening. It's the same water but thanks to light, the movement of clouds and the changing position of sun, the water seems to have different shade of blue every time you look. Bridget Riley studied at the Goldsmiths College and the Royal College of Art in London. At the beginning of her career, her paintings were more in an um, impressionist style and then changed to pointillism. Have you heard about pointillism? There is an artist called George Seurat. One of his paintings hangs at the National Gallery and it's called The Bathers. Bridget Riley visited National Gallery very often and she loved looking at that particular picture. It's made of little dabs of paint in different colors. And when you look at it from a distance, the colors mix in your eyes and make an optical illusion. She 
reworked this、um, painting by Seurat, and she studied every single dab of color to find out how we see the colors. Going to learn about different shapes because Bridget Riley's art is full of shapes. First, her early works in 1960s included just black and white colors. For many years. She developed variations of op art work, only using black and white. I really like her painting called Exposure. You can hardly see from a distance. But when you look closer, you see there are lines, wavy lines. So we are going to look at line drawing as well. And then, in 1967, she decided to introduce color. Her work. She was interested in the effect of color and contrast, something that she learned from the bathers and other paintings by Seurat. She described her new art as closer to our experience of the real world. Well, this is true because our world is not just black and white; it's full of color. She did one of her first pictures was called "Chant to a Late Morning," and they were colorful stripes. One of her stripy pictures, called "Cold Red Movement," contains several colors, but no red at all. <laughs> When you look at it, it seems like there is red included. This is the magic. Bridget Riley does. <laughs> Her later works included even more color, especially after her travel to Egypt. She was inspired by the hieroglyphic writing. And also the amazing light architecture and colors of the ancient world of Egypt. The paintings called Ra and Ka were inspired by her. Trips to Egypt, and she used oil paint here, just because they offer richer and more intense shades, just like those she saw during her travels. The rhomboid paintings happened. When Riley crossed 
the stripy pictures with diagonal lines and then divided all these lines into small shape called rhombus. I really love this series of those four paintings that were on display at Hayward Gallery. You could see how they differ and how she used various color arrangements to achieve a totally different effect. So today we are going to play a little bit with this incredible shape, rhombus. You can cut out your shapes from different papers. You can just prepare your various shapes if you want to. But you can also do it differently if you have a printer very easily. You can use the exercise sheet I sent you and print it out on a colored card. So I just printed them on different colored card. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut along the lines to get lots of rhombuses and make art that will look a bit like Bridget Riley's Egypt inspired works from 1980s. Okay everyone, are we ready now to start our first project inspired by Bridget Riley? I hope so. So all you need to do is prepare your shapes, scissors, ruler, glue and the paper you're gonna stick on your creations. Let's start! This picture is entitled High Sky and it has been painted in 1991. I wanted to show you different color combinations of rhombus paintings that Bridget Riley did. All these paintings seem to be the same, but at the same time they are all different. different. So what colors are you going to use? Are they gonna remind you of warm colors of Egypt? Or maybe the green bright colors of spring? about using some black and white. Whichever colors you're going to choose, it's gonna look amazing. So first you need to prepare your background. So remember that the background has to have a contrasting color. So the background has to be different than the colors you're going to stick it on. This is one of the works I did in the past. You 
can see the rhombuses are lined up diagonally, but they also create stripes like that. So you can print out some pre-drawn rhombus shapes on different colored different colors and now I'm gonna <coughs> cut them out so let's start Okay everyone, all you need to do now is arrange your rhombuses on a different colored paper. The best for it is card because it's a bit thicker, but you can use your sketchbook, whatever you have, and you will need print stick glue as well. If you want you can make some lines even to make your rhombuses go straight and it's quite handy to actually have a few lines Remember that rhombus art was created by combining stripy line, stripy art and some diagonal lines. Okay, one more. I'm not gonna do it all the way. My art will be only in the middle of the page. Like so. will be only in the middle. So let's start arranging the rhombuses of different colors. I'm gonna leave some black spaces as well.
Can you see how the rhombuses go within the stripes? That's why it's really good to have some lines drawn on your background paper. Use this time to really think about colors. Do not stick quite yet. This is the time for your concept, for your idea, and how your work will look like. I want my art to have a lot of sunny colors, bright colors, a lot of orange, red and yellow. like that okay I think I'm ready to stick my first layer so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take one by one stick it in place without moving any others so make sure you leave all your your rhombuses in place and just remove one okay let's do it
overlap, which means they will be stuck on halfway through on top. Great. And what I want to do now to make this piece a little bit more like it's moving is add some on top. First I'm gonna place them on top. And when I'm happy I will stick them wide one by one. I'm happy how it looks so I will stick, start sticking those top pieces on one by one. fun you can keep adding more rhombuses to your picture I think they are all stuck on now so look how three-dimensional this work of art Rhombus art inspired by Bridget Riley. The second project we are going to do it will be all about circles. This is an early work by Bridget Riley where she used just black and white and you can almost see how 
canvas is folded, but it's not. It's just the way she used lighter and lighter shades of grey. How clever that is! You can try doing something like that. Or we can do something she did in Hayward Gallery's wall. All this was painted on the wall. So we are going to use a shape of a circle and do a composition with circles. Hmm. How do we make a perfect circle? Do you know? The best way to do that is to use a special tool used often in mathematics. And this tool is called a compass. So I've got this compass and a different one. So you just need to put the sharp end of the compass into your paper, holding your compass by the black holder at the top and then create a circle. Right, so let's prepare a white piece of paper and your compass. I believe that some of you don't have compass at home. Don't worry, you can bring some round objects from around the house. I'm sure you have some of these lids at home. So you can find some jar lids or tape is really wonderful to make circles. So you can either use some of the tapes and lids you find in the kitchen and just simply draw around it like so, holding your lid in place. This is a circle, or you can use a compass. So we are going to do a composition of circles, which means I'm going to draw lots of circles in an abstract way. can draw the same size which means you will use just one circular object and use lots of circles and make lots of circles with it or you can change and use different objects my paper with circles. like how it looks and I decided to paint the spaces created by circles with my watercolors. There we are! 
watercolors ready. Let's start coloring in my abstract circle art. I feel my 
my picture is finished now. All I need to do is sign it and write today's date too. project we will do today together is inspired by those incredible black and white op art pieces from Bridget Riley's early career. I really love the exposure painted in 1966. It's made of lines that are really, really close to each other. And that's what we will do. So I'm going to draw lines first, so I don't need to fill in the whole page. I will draw a little frame by using this book smaller than A4 size so you can just draw around the book you can use a ruler right so this is my frame and now I'm going to draw curly lines Starting from the middle. And then each line will be very close to the previous one. Just making sure they are not touching. Can you do that? a pencil or a marker or even normal writing pen
keep going. This is finished now. I'm just gonna sign it in between the lines and find a suitable space for the date. Done. This is my artwork inspired by Bridget Riley's black and white early pieces. What is interesting about Bridget Riley's artwork is that she thinks that the process of developing her ideas, doing preparational drawings and studies, also analyzing the color, so just checking which colors work together. This is the most important part of her creative process. Then she makes a lot of um, studies and also full-scale studies. When she is happy with the final results, this is the moment when her assistants take over. So when you go and look at the exhibition of her work, the paintings you see are actually painted by her assistants, not by herself. But this is because the way she works. She is behind the idea she is doing the process when she decides on colors and how to arrange everything but then the the moment of execution of the pro project is when she uses the help of others well it's absolutely understandable because she is a 89 years old lady now. So with the great scale of her paintings, it would be physically very difficult to do it all by herself. She also does work that is painted directly on walls. They called murals. One of her permanent murals is displayed at St. Mary's Hospital in London and it's 56 meters long. 
She also did temporary murals for museums such as the National Gallery, Tate Modern, and recently Hayward Gallery. It's a wonderful way to admire her work when it's painted directly on the wall. It would be lovely to have one of her paintings di painted directly on one of the walls in my house. <laughs> I hope that this lesson was inspirational for you and you will not look at shapes in the same way again, especially rhombus. It's a, such a wonderful shape that can be arranged in so many different ways. Thank you for participating in lesson number nine and I'm looking forward to seeing all your amazing shapey work that you did this week.